Get that paper, so they glock, that's how we live. Yeah, my life is game, I pray I don't get killed. They can't believe I got the guac, this shit for real. Can't accept the fact my brother gone, I wanna kill. Yeah, I can't go for that, that shit don't sit right. Better cap it to the old nigga, I know what you live like. Uh, I ain't worried about all just for these hoes and live life. As they look down at Tanjiro with disgust, the same thing happens as in the original, meaning Nezuko denies the blood of Sanami, convincing the Demon Slayers. However, this time Tanjiro began releasing ice from his body that made Obanai slam him to the ground even harder. After the whole ordeal was settled, the trio of Demon Slayers began recovering in the butterfly state. And with that time passing, Tanjiro actually began searching for the answers of his past, meaning he was trying to discover what this dance of fire truly was. He wishes he could ask Nezuko, but not even she could respond nor remember. However, hearing of a Hashira who manipulates flames caused Tanjiro to become curious. Tanjiro would then be given another blade during this time before heading to find Rengoku, the flame Hashira, meeting at the train, the three of them would hop on without their tickets and eventually find Rengoku in the train cart. Sitting down with him, Tanjiro learns nothing of this dance, but Rengoku states that he believes this is the first time in history that an ice demon slayer has been present, so that itself was astonishing. Tanjiro was already making history, and if he was able to control flames as well, then he will become a Hashira himself. And hearing these words motivated the young Tanjiro but his next words were stopped as a demon would appear on the train cart and Rengoku quickly dispatches the demon. And then it's shown that each one of our heroes is asleep. Enmu stood on top of the train carts, smiling and stating that the true fun can truly begin. Tanjiro wakes up within his own dream, seeing his family alive once again. This couldn't be true. He then believes that his demon slayer life was all a dream. Staying with his family, Tanjiro smirked and actually began to enjoy himself, as did the others in their respective dreams. However, soon Tanjiro realizes that this was a dream alongside Rengoku. Then, each one of them was still asleep and on the outside, Nezuko was the one trying to wake them up. She had to resort to extreme measures, using her blood demon art or pink flames to awaken her brother from his dream. Still, Tanjiro had to do his part and sliced off his own neck in order to fully wake up, only furthering his resolve to succeed. As Tanjiro begins trying to wake up his friends, he's attacked by the others on the train cart. Tanjiro would fight back without a second thought here, as he's able to knock them out and leave them in the cart. This is when he tells Nezuko to help the others wake up as he chases down the demon responsible. Enmu turns, not believing his eyes. Well, you're awake early. Tanjiro doesn't even speak, only focusing on the battle ahead. Ice begins to surround his body and his blade as he looks on. Enmu feels this cold sensation within his own body. But just what was this comparable to? Ah yes, the fear that Tanjiro's ice creates was immense. Frost breathing, first form, ice slash. Tanjiro slides by Enmu, aiming for the neck, and he actually manages to slice it off. The demon's head bounces before being connected back to the train, making Tanjiro realize that this lower moon demon was even stronger and smarter than Ryu. Realizing that Enmu was connected to the train itself, Tanjiro needed to make a plan for those in the train cart as they could be injured. This is when Inosuke, who had just awakened, comes to assist Tanjiro by slicing through all the attacks that were incoming. The citizens within the cart are also protected by the group of demon slayers and Rengoku who would come up with a plan. He plans to defend most of the carts by himself and have Nezuko and Zenitsu defend the remaining three. As for the lower ranked demon, Tanjiro and Inosuke must hunt its head down. Tanjiro here wouldn't argue as he only takes a deep breath, causing ice to slowly surround parts of his body that remain hidden. Tanjiro then runs outside and flips on top of the carts and then focuses on what's around him. Inosuke reappears to his side and the two would head towards the train car in the front. Tanjiro internalizes what's going on around him and then focuses on what's up ahead. The room is then completely frozen 
by Tandro's breathing technique. He slowly begins walking forward while examining the limbs that had attacked them. Slicing them off one by one, he realizes that there were bones underneath. Quickly, they were covered, and Tandro, well, his eyes would widen as he was almost falling asleep while fighting. With his hands going in, he grabbed his blade tighter and focused. Frost breathing. Second form. Snowstorm Barrage. Swinging his blade in all directions to cover himself. And in Nosuke, the two are able to make a path towards what seems like the head of this demon. Tanjiro is launched down that way by Inosuke and flames and surround his blade. Hinokami Kagura. Clear blue sky. Landing the attack, which is able to cut right through and cause the train cars to then begin flying apart. Tanjiro jumps out and while mid-air, flying back he focuses on all the carts. Having some sort of sense for this, as if he's done it before, it's almost as if his body moves on its own, as he says to himself he'll only get his one chance here. Frost breathing, crystallized reflection, third fold, with three other ice reflections appearing of Tandro, they aided him to create walls of ice for the train carts that would crash into them and stop them from flipping around. This wouldn't be enough, but it did mitigate the damage. With this, each of the Demon Slayers is able to regroup with Tanjiro and Inosuke, where Rengoku states that Tanjiro is impressive. An explosion then goes off, with Tanjiro raising his guard once again. Seeing what was around them, they noticed that the air had shifted. What was this? This is when they look in to see Upper Moon 3 revealing himself and rushing in to attack Tanjiro. Respectively, Rengoku performs the second form of flame breathing, while Tanjiro uses the first form of frost breathing. A blazing heat slices Akaza's right arm, and a cold cut frost slices across his chest, leaving ice there. Flipping back, Akaza commends these two, with Rengoku stating that he will handle this himself. Tanjiro nods but states that he plans to back up the Hashira and try his best to not get in his way. This is when we see that Akaza gives out a deal to Rengoku of becoming a demon. He would of course decline and the Upper Moon 3 gets into a fighting stance. Blood Demon Art, Destructive Death, Compass Needle. With the snowflake appearing on the ground and his body beginning to glow, he vanished from sight, as did Rengoku as they would clash. Blade and fist echoing throughout the battlefield as these two seemed almost equal. While they interlocked, Tanjiro appeared on Akaza's right side. The demon pushes away, and the Hashira smirks and focuses on helping Tanjiro. He then punches right through the boy. However, Akaza realizes that his hand was then covered in ice, as the boy would then shatter. A decoy? The real Tanjiro was on his backside, and sliced right at his neck using the first form of frost breathing. This cut Akaza, but not deep at all allowing the demon to jump away and realize that he couldn't heal the cut due to ice seeping into his neck and blocking his cells from healing themselves. What a pest. I need to kill that annoying brat. Akaza wouldn't have any breathing room at all as Rengoku would appear again, right there, continuing their battle. These two battled more intensely than ever. This was more intense than anything Tanjiro had ever seen thus far. Tanjiro then rushes back in to help the flame Hashira and blocks an attack for him, allowing him to land slices on Akaza. Annoying the demon, who sends Tanjiro flying and rushes in after him. I'll kill him now. Rengoku would appear again blocking the path and taking the demon off course. Your true battle is with me. These two would keep clashing over and over, with Akaza smiling while having fun during this battle. The demon explains to the Hashira, their battle will go down in history, but if he wants to truly grow stronger, then he needs to become a demon. With the flame Hashira ignoring this, going into their battle further, it would ramp up. Getting so intense that Tandra knew he couldn't even intervene due to the fact that these two began moving so fast. Watching on from a distance, he wished he could help, but he also began seeing things, learning more and more while watching this battle, beginning to reach its climax with Rengoku and Akaza both pulling out their final techniques. 
However, this time, as Akaza goes to move, he can't, as his feet are stuck. He would then look down and scoffs in anger, seeing the ice, and he tracks it from a distance as we'd see Tanjiro, with him kneeling down and his blade stabbed into the ground after performing the frozen wasteland technique. Damn you, brat, he begins to yell, as he then turns to see the flame Hashira getting even closer to him, yelling for the demon slayers to bring their all if they truly want to end him here and now. These two are engulfed in flames, and the others are forced to watch on. As the dust soon begins to settle, we see the two of them locked together, with Rengoku's blade halfway through Akaza's body, while on the other hand, the demon, well his fist, were just inches away from piercing the chest of the Hashira. If he was able to use his feet, he may have reached him. But then, the sun slowly began to rise as Akaza tried to make his escape. This is when Tanjiro would appear again. Due to him not being injured, he was able to assist him just a little bit more. Frost breathing, second form, snowstorm barrage. While Akaza was being held in place by the blade of Rengoku, his feet were cut off by Tanjiro as he then fell to the ground. Feeling the scorching heat of the sun rise, hit his back. He knew what he needed to do, but there was nothing he could. He couldn't escape the deadly sunlight, so he began to regenerate his feet and he launched himself forward with his arms. However, both Rengoku and Tanjiro chased him down and began slowing him down. With Akaza making it to the trees where the shade was, he thought he was safe until a blazing heat from Rengoku's flame breathing sent him flying into another open area. Akaza was now panicking, believing that this could be the end right here and now. Damn you! Damn it all! I won't lose to you pathetic and worthless humans now. Why don't you all just die already? Using his blood demon art, one final time to defend himself. With Tanjiro appearing performing the Hinokami Kagura dance to create his own flames that burn parts of Akaza he can't regenerate. Still, the demon is able to counter as his fist slowly approaches the face of the young Tanjiro. Rengoku blocks the attack and pushes Akaza back but it comes at the cost of his own hand as it breaks. He still holds onto his blade, claiming that humans are incredible, and so is their potential as it's limitless. And the limited time that they have here is what makes them so precious. A demon like him could never understand that. The sun fully begins to rise, and Akaza has slowly turned to ash as he begins to remember his past, slowly dipping into it. Seeing his own loved ones as they would welcome him into the afterlife, as he then begins to remember how he was treated at one time and why he fights the way he does. Slowly fading away, Upper Moon 3 was defeated by the Demon Slayers alongside the Sun. Tanjiro and Rengoku would fall to their knees, exhausted, with the crows exclaiming their victory to all the other Demon Slayers and Hashira. Rengoku, alongside Tanjiro and company, had defeated Upper Moon 3 and a Lower Moon Demon within 24 hours. This is the new age of Hashira, and it seems that this group of demon slayers will be able to finish a battle that was started so long ago. With the battle now being over, Bako would arrive as the demon slayers later returned to their base to begin healing. As while at the butterfly estate, our trio is able to begin the recovery process once again. And with Upper Moon 3 being defeated, this early, Muzan calls a meeting for all his other Upper Moon Demons, telling them to not hold back against the Demon Slayer corpse and to kill that boy with the earrings if they ever do cross him. Still, some time does pass with Tandra slowly recovering, but then also training to get more comfortable with sun breathing. Rengoku still being alive here is such a big thing, but he still has to take time to heal, but he does take Tandra to his own state where his father was. They would meet and ask Rengoku's father about sun breathing. At first he wants to say nothing especially because he still has a slight anger towards his eldest. But Rengoku commands an answer for Tanjiro believing that he will be the next Hashira to lead the charge against Muzan. Seeing the earrings his father becomes enraged believing Tanjiro also came here to mock his family. Instead Tanjiro bows his head pleading to him 
These earrings and dance of the flames were left by my father to me, and it is all I have left of him besides memories. Please help me honor my father and my family like Kyojiro does for you. Hearing these words struck a change in the father's heart as he told the two to follow him, leading them to a room where we would give him a book that was stated to have different notes on such breathing techniques. He gives it to Tandra, claiming that this what was left of it from his own rage and do with it what he wants. Opening the book to see the pages about sun breathing ripped to shreds and pieces. Tanjiro would thank Rengoku and his younger brother for their assistance, but he states he ne needs to continue his training once again. Walking back to the butterfly state, Tanjiro wonders when his blade would come back, as he had to send it somewhere due to it being so bent out of shape from his last battle. And as he continues to walk, the blacksmith would appear, the man with the mask, as he would stop Tandra, presenting his new and improved blade to him, stating that the durability has been increased so much so that Tandra should be able to fight with no problems at all. He's actually a little proud of himself. And Tandra, well, since he was able to help defeat an upper moon demon, his blacksmith has a little bit more pride in his work as he wishes Tandro luck on his next mission and begins to head back home. Tandro is able to regroup with the others, continuing their training, becoming stronger and more durable for the battles to come ahead. This is also when Tengen Uzui appears, taking Aoi and Naoya for his mission. The person to stop him here, though, is actually his true friend. Rengoku's hand was on his shoulder. It was still bruised and broken but he was slowly recovering as well. The two would talk as Rengoku suggested that Tanjiro and his friends go with him instead on their mission. As for him, he plans to back him up after taking care of his hand first and completing his training that he has with his father to master a new technique. Tengen Uzui then looks forward at Tanjiro and waves for him to come on, letting the girls go and explaining their mission. They begin traveling to the booming city and would arrive quickly with Tantro focusing on their main goal, defeat the demon hiding in plain sight. Here, Tantro actually remembers how Muzan was hiding and disguised himself as he began hiding in the estates. With that, he sneaks around at nighttime, just like Inosuke and Zenitsu do. They end up searching around for days before finding any leads, but the main woman in charge has the scent of a demon. Tantro isn't 100% sure but he later runs into an elderly woman who explains that the headmistress has been here for a very long time, even when she was a younger girl. But somehow she hasn't aged a single day. With this new information, Tandro plans to make his move this night and begin a battle. If she is an upper moon demon, Tandro needs to be careful in order to swiftly defeat her. We would then go into a room to see Daki holding up a woman who was held hostage when ice slowly began seeping through the cracks of the room, of the doors and the windows. Feeling this chilling sensation, Daki twists and turns, asking who was there? Ice as Zen converted into the small room as a voice was heard. I won't allow this to go on any longer. Frost breathing, first form, ice slash. Tandra cuts the woman free and then places her near the door. Tell the others to evacuate for their safety. Daki would try to take the opportunity to attack him. Didn't your master ever tell you not to turn your back on your opponent? Daki tries to rip through him using her attacks, but ice shatters in the boy's place. The true Tandro stands behind her, as proud as ever. And don't assume that I would ever turn my back on one of the upper moon demons. Now, let's begin. Tandro then blitzes her, sending her flying outside of the building as she crashes down into the streets below, and he doesn't let up from here. Her ribbons do their best to try and defend her, but Tandro was quick. Frost breathing. Second form. Snowstorm barrage. Cutting through while also blocking the demon's attacks, Daki was completely thrown off. Not only was this brat's speed incredible, but his movements are becoming sharper by the minute. Don't tell me that he's learning while we fight. Or is it... Daki then blocks an attack 
countering Tanjiro and forcing him to jump away. Hey kid, let me ask you something. Tanjiro remains silent while Daki speaks. Were you a part of that group that helped defeat Upper Moon 3? Tanjiro then grips his blade tighter, responding, Yeah, I was. So what? Daki then prepares herself for the battle ahead of her, and Tanjiro begins to rush right back in, sprinting with all his force. Blocking the ribbons while getting closer and closer, Hinokami Kagura, clear blue sky. With this circle of flames cutting through her torso, she screams in agony while trying to heal it. It's as almost as if this breathing technique left some type of scar where she was trying to heal. Still, this boy's stance and his presence, why was it all so familiar? She's seen it before, but where? Could it possibly be one of the Hashra that she had defeated long ago? No. This, this all had to be something else. The battle between these two continues on, with them seemingly equal for now. This Tanjiro was much stronger than the one we would see in the original. Thanks to frost breathing, he's able to maneuver around the ribbons much easier. However, a civilian does get caught in the way, forcing Tanjiro to then protect them. He takes some damage here, but is able to slightly recover. Bleeding from his side, he looks at the demon still facing him. Taking a deep breath and zoning in, Tanjiro then performs Frost Breathing's fourth form, Winter's Breath, blitzing the demon with speed and blocking each ribbon attack. Each time the ribbon makes contact with Tanjiro's blade, ice freezes it in place, leading Dagi to having her arm completely cut off and that side of her body having ice that begins to spread. Tanjiro focuses on switching to Sun Breathing as now flames come from his blade and he swings it to her, getting closer and closer. And right as he was about to finish the job, he falls to the ground while coughing up blood. His body was at its natural limits and couldn't go any further. And he was struggling to even breathe. He doesn't have enough stamina of a Hashira to even keep up with the movements that he was doing. And looking down, she prepares to finish him off, but Nezuko would appear saving him. He would thank his sister as she would look down at him to see his injuries and was infuriated by the demon. Daki and Nezuko then go on to have the same battle as in the original, and while this went on, Tengen and the others successfully would save his wives and were beginning to head to support Tanjiro. With the battle between the two demon girls ramping up, Tanjiro was focused on stopping his sister as she was getting out of control. However, this time he uses frost breathing to subdue her arms and her legs to pin her down. As eventually she goes back to sleep, with Tengen arriving to cut off the head of Daki. And as Tanjiro places Nezuko back into the box, he watches on as Daki begins yelling and screaming at the two of them and then starts crying. She cries that it isn't fair as Tengen was a Hashira and he caught her off guard. But this was confusing them. If her head was cut off, why is she not faded away yet? They begin to process what's going on realizing that she might not be the demon that they were looking for. And as soon as they came to this realization, another demon appears. Tanjiro and Tengen would instantly move in. Gyutaro dodges their attacks and moves his sister out of the way while touching her face. Don't worry, it'll be fine now. I'll make sure these two pay for harming your beauty. He turns to them, saying that the two of them are impressive. But this is where you'll die. Seeing the demon make his move, Tengen pushes Tanjiro and Nezuko out of the way into the street and blocks the attack. Tanjiro will then regroup with the wives, Anosuke and Zenitsu, and he explains how the demons must be connected in some way, shape, or form, or the sister may not truly be the real Upper Moon Six, as it must be the brother. And if that's the case, he needs to be their main focus. Tengen was handling him right now, so they need to just buy him a little bit more time and take away the sister so that he can focus fully. The three demon slayers make their plan and begin to execute it. Jumping onto the roof, they would then focus staring down Daki and begin to launch their attacks. This time, she seemed to be fully healed and had her ribbons at the ready. Blocking their attacks while continuing the battle, Tanjiro would jump forward. Zenitsu was by his side, 
but Daki's speed had somehow increased. She appeared behind them, and if not for Tenken's wives, this could have been fatal. But just how could she become so fast in just a few mere moments? We'd go over to the battle between Tengen and Gyutaro. As the demon begins to explain, something pretty extraordinary about the upper moons. Appearing behind Tengen and slashing his back, not even the Hashira could have predicted this level of speed. If our lord gives us more of his blood and we overcome its struggles, we become even stronger. And then that's when we'd actually see the true eyes of these siblings simultaneously. With Gyutaro and Daki being upper moon five, Tengen smiles, flipping away and then raising his guard. This won't be an easy battle, but he'll lay everything on the line just to succeed. He wishes the other Demon Slayers luck against Daki, but they should be fine. And going back to their battle on the other side of the building, Inosuke and Zenitsu twisted and turned to dodge her attacks. Meanwhile, Tanjiro was trying to get in close, but was also strategizing. If cutting off her head alone didn't work, then there had to be something to it. Maybe if both of these demons were the same upper moons, if they were both upper moon five, could it be possible that they need to cut off? This is when Tanjiro would let them know as he comes to a realization. As he explains it, Zenitsu and Inosuke, well, he tells them to get ready because he plans to do it soon. He begins running to help Tengen, telling them to just manage to cut off her head as he plans to help Tengen do the same. If they can somehow do this around the same time, or at least keep Daki's head severed long enough for them to take off Gyutaro's, then they could overcome these demons as well and win the battle here. But it would be difficult. He would wish his friends luck as he goes to help the Hashira. Rushing in, Gyutaro's blood demon art was fierce, forcing Tanjiro and Tengen to work together well, and it still seemed like this wasn't enough. With Tengen here losing his right hand in front of our protagonist, all hope started to look lost as Zenitsu and Inosuke began to push Daki back, actually cutting off her head, running away with it. Inosuke plans to give our heroes more time, but he gets stabbed by Gyutaro. This is when all of our heroes seem to be down for the count. Tanjiro was the only one who could just barely move. Gyutaro then begins to walk towards him, saying he had no chance of winning by himself. You really are pathetic, you know that? Tanjiro still managed to stand, and he takes a deep breath. He notices the flames around the area and closes his eyes. Why should they have to lose here when everyone is counting on them to win? No, I won't. I won't accept it at all. Frost breathing. Frozen wasteland. Ice covers the surrounding area and dissipates the flames. With Tanjiro, then rushing into Gyutaro. The demon blocks the attacks with his own weapons. However, Tanjiro begins to speed up, with Gyutaro's movements almost slowed down to him. He can't figure out why this was, but Tanjiro's chance was here as he begins to push through. Swing his blade high and striking down, Gyutaro pushes it off. Tanjiro now swings his blade again, but now Gyutaro swings to kill the boy, countering it. With Tanjiro not knowing what he could do, he knows that he can't block the attack. Then, the attack is blocked by Tengen himself. However, this Gyutaro is much faster, and he turns his whole body, kicking Tengen away and now aiming for the vital points of both of the Slayers at one time. Tengen is just barely able to counter with his blade blocking the attack, but he can't make it to help Tanjiro. Watching on through his one eye, he continues to focus seeing what was right in front of him. The blade slowly got closer and closer to Tanjiro's throat. But in this moment, flames engulfed the area and protected him. Kyojiro Rengoku arrives sporting a new outfit as it was white, gold, and red. Not only that, his eyes were fierce as he claimed that this is where they would make another breakthrough, defeating another upper moon and claiming victory for the Demon Slayer corpse once again. An all-out battle with these three begins to go on, with Tanjiro as a support. Meanwhile, Zenitsu and Inosuke take on Daki. This time, Nezuko would wake up in order to help them as well with their own blood demon art. These intense fights are soon wrapped up with the head of Daki being sliced off by the two slayers 
and meanwhile Tanjiro is able to sneak up on Gyutaro to behead him using the Hinokami Kagura. With Rengoku here, the tide of battle completely changed. However, the body of Gyutaro wanted revenge, not letting the Slayers get off so easy. Later exploding, destroying the entire area, Tanjiro wakes up with Nezuko and his friends removing the rubble from on top of him. Surprised that he was able to behead the demon, his sister then carries him over to Rengoku and Tengen, showing off that her flames could also heal. With so much going on, Tanjiro slowly began to celebrate, as Obanai later arrives, saying that Rengoku did good by going ahead first, but then looks at Tengen. You should be able to recover after this. Tengen claims that this was it for him though. He'll remain in the Demon Slayer corpse, but not as a Hashira. He's stepping down from that position. Obanai was angered, since here, he had only lost one hand, but had both eyes, even though one of his eyes just would have a scar on it. But Tengen then points to Tanjiro. That boy, that young slayer right there, will become the next Hashira and continue to lead us to victory. I'm sure of it. And this is where I'll end part two of this series. I am literally so sorry that it took so long for me to get this out. But I will tell you guys this. I stay in Florida where we just had hurricanes back to back. So I was constantly losing power and I had this script done. It just took me so long to get a chance to actually record it, especially because I didn't want to record it on my phone just to cheap out and get a video out fast. I wanted it to be on my computer where I was more comfortable doing it, especially for you guys. But if you have anything you do want to see in season three, let me know as I plan to make this next video really quickly. And for the fourth part of this series, I plan to make that one the finale. So be ready for that and leave any ideas you guys have for me in the comments, as well as any other what ifs you may want to see on my channel, as I'm always reading all the comments that you guys put. And I'm very thankful for all the support that you continue to give me. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. My name is Zero, and I'll catch you all on the next one.